meet you too so you know for every I, I know who you are I've, you know I'm an avid sports fan football fan I, I knew who you were when when Ado mentioned you were coming on I was excited I, I know exactly who you are you went to BC and everything so uh, tell our viewers that might not know you a little bit about yourself so yeah so I'm um, Jonathan Hilleman um, originally from Plainfield New Jersey uh, went to St. Peter's Prep uh, high school in Jersey City after that obviously Met my dog, Ado, at our Boston College, where we kind of did our thing for a little bit. Um, and then from there, I graduated and went to Rutgers for the fi my final year of eligibility. After that, I spent two seasons with the Giants and currently a free agent right now. So, yeah. Nice. So, what, you know, what, when did you know that you wanted to do football? When, what age would you say you, you really discovered, like, that was your sport and you wanted to pursue a professional career in football? At the age of three, uh, I knew I knew that from the age of three. Uh, I actually told I, my dad. It's like a big story in our house and family. My dad was tells it all the time. Uh, I I kind of was watching the game, uh, Giants versus the Ravens. I was three years old. It was like a regular season game, and I was just like really just captivated by like how much emotion was on the field and they were running around hitting each other. Back in that era, you actually really can hit people and not you know get a fine for it. So you know it was really just like captivating for me and I just ran into like the living room and was like yeah dad I'm playing the NFL I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm 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 have a career in the NFL he was kind of like yeah all right and then he was just you know what I'm saying kind of like the same parents like yeah NFL right okay great and um so I was kind of like nah I'm dead serious I'm gonna play and he was like, all right well if you're gonna play then you gotta get serious about it and I was like all right and then just from that day I just kind of just like it was just been football first ever since obviously you know played other sports basketball wrestled boxed ran track, you know, things like that. But football's always been, like, first. So, I mean, I would say about the age of three was, like, the time when I said, yeah, this is what I want to do. Nice. You knew early. So, <laughs> throughout all the time you played football, high school and college and professional, what would you say is your favorite on-field moment? The can you um, do something. Our, my favorite on-field moment was actually in Pop Warner. <laughs> we won uh we won the central jersey state championship um and i think i was like 10 years old and um it was just really cool like they had like this little confetti machine trying to make it seem like the super bowl and um so and from there we went on and, and you know went pretty far so but I, I say it was that because it was like you know all everybody because that team had played together for like three years prior so we played together for a little while and um, we've always got close and lost, but to finally actually win was kind of really, really cool, I would say. So I said I was probably my, when I was 10 years old, my team. Uh, shout out to the guys who are, you know, if they're, you know, watching this, you know, shout out to you guys. But yeah, we did that. <laughs> That's dope. John, got a question for you, if, if you don't mind me hijacking. Yeah. I know, obviously, I know we spend a good amount of time at BC, you're my guy. Um, but what was that recruiting process like? Um, obviously, highly talented guy, um, running back. Had an amazing career at BC. Tell us a little bit about that because um, I know you ain't gonna, you're not gonna uh, give yourself justice, but you did your damn thing over there. You know what I mean? Man, appreciate that, big dog. Uh, yeah, it, uh, so I would say it was like a tale of two cities, kind of. I'm a Jayco fan. Uh, tale of two <laughs> cities. Uh, so at, at first, it was so exciting. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of like, it's just something new. Like, my goal was just to get a scholarship, just to go to college. Um, my parents, obviously, you know, tough times growing up like we that's just something we there wasn't in the cards to just do financially. So I knew I had to figure out a way to do it. Um, but so I just wanted to get a scholarship. And then when they started to just come in um, as, you know, the school I went to uh, was, you know, obviously a phenomenal academic institution, but um, it was a football factory. You know, it was guys, guys get recruited heavily from, you know, the school that I went to. So, you know, once, you know, after, I would say, after my freshman season going and playing, you know, varsity as a sophomore, starting some games, I mean, you know, it just came came in in droves, you know what I'm saying? Like if different schools were coming in and things like that. I would say right around, 
I was over it probably around like going into my senior year because, uh, you know, it, 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 it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. I, you know what I'm saying? And obviously we wanted that or happy for that, but it just got annoying with like the phone calls and, you yeah. know, at weird times. And you got people from coach, coaches from different um, time zones that don't get that, you know, it's, it's 1130. 1130. <laughs> I got to get on to go to school and they still want to call and talk and you got to be respectful, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, they're, they're extending a, a scholarship to you. But and then reporters, as soon as you get it, then, you know, the, the, the beat reporters throughout New Jersey high school football will call you 10 minutes later because they just found out. And so things like that was just really, really annoying and stressing, you know what I'm saying? And so I would say it was like a Taylor Two Cities, but you know, I, I was committed to Rutgers at first, then, you know, things happened, the program was kind of, I just didn't feel like it was stable at that time. So I ended up, you know, making the decision to go to Boston College. And after that, I think I, I, it was just kind of like a big weight was off my shoulders. I finally can, you know, enjoy the rest of my high school, you know, career, you know, track and just having fun. And, um, yeah, but it, it, at first it was really great, but towards the end it was like, I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you. And um, obviously BC's had some, you know, uh, notable players that have come on, gone on to to the next level. And um, honestly, I, I say this with with full honesty, like I, like yourself and the AJs and um, you know a few guys before that class, you know, kind of paved the way for the running game at, at BC. You know what I mean? So. Um, how does that feel to kind of set that stage um, with so many notable guys that have gone through the program and, and things of that nature? It's awesome. I mean, I you know, I feel like everybody, um, regardless of where you, even outside of sport, like regardless of, you know, any occupation or vocation you choose, uh, you kind of want to leave a mark, you know, on the big wall that, you know, you know, that whole vocation of that whole program, whatever, you want to at least leave a little mark to say that you were there, you yeah. know, and, um, I know I'm glad to be able to say that I've done that. I'm glad to be able to say I play with guys who have done that. And um, yeah, it, it feels it feels you know gratifying you know being there for a while and you know going to bowl games and things like that and kind of trying to you know push the rock over the hill and turn it in turn get BC back into like a respectable program because before you know before we had come in I think the year before that was they went to a bowl game but. Before that, it was there was a drought for a while, and that's what you know recruiters and coaches were saying. You know, your your class is gonna help. You know, you're gonna go through a lot of the, the rough times, but you're gonna help. You know, kind of bring us back to respectable. And now, you know, watching it now, guys are doing big things, phenomenal things. You see, you know, guys on all conference, all Americans. You, it start to become expected now. You know what I'm saying? And that that's just a phenomenal thing to say that you know you, you know, at some point. I was a part of that and a part of helping to to shape that. So that's that's just a, a very gratifying thing. That's dope, man. That's dope. So yeah, we mentioned BC and Rutgers, like back and forth a little bit here. I guess on the field and off the field. But what would you say? What, what was better? Which school would you have more fun at? Because this is an important this is an important question because we got a lot of Boston fans. Kind of loaded because Boston College. I have more time there. Um, yeah. but I mean, I'm from New Jersey, but. I mean, I would obviously say Boston College. I mean, I have more time there. I have more memories there. I mean, I have more friends there. I, when I came back to Rutgers, I mean, I still have my guys who I knew that were still on the team. And I have fun, obviously, because I'm from New Jersey, so I know the landscape. But, you know, Boston College, it was more because, you know, it was a new city. Boston it was a big city. I knew nothing about it. Um, I knew nothing about, you know, that area. So it was kind of just like, exploring something new every every day every week every weekend whatever and so I, but yeah I, I would say I have more fun at Boston College I was telling my folks out there <laughs> that's a good answer I was gonna say <laughs> it would have been a tricky ass question man it's a tricky question that's a great answer so kind of moving on to more NFL oriented stuff I'm just thinking here like what what do you think how, how do you think the NFL handled the corona situation this last season like watching that, like watching that unfold and yeah. all that. I think they did the best they could. I mean, it's hard to try to, you know, football is such a, a con. It's a collision sport. You're not even really a contact sport. So it's like space is, you know, it's something. It's, a, you know, what I'm saying like there is no real space really. You know, like you, six feet. Like how are you gonna make a tackle six feet away? Like you can't. It, it's impossible. Right. So I mean, every, every you know. 
And I think that they did the best that they could with how tough it is with traveling. And you have, you know, as opposed to the NBA, who did a phenomenal job. Um, it's, but it's a smaller organization that you're dealing with. You know, you're dealing with probably 12, 15 guys as opposed to in the NFL, it's like 53, 63, and not even talking about the, the training staff and the coaches and, you know, the people up top who deal with, you know, the financial stuff. Um, it's just, it's, it's really tough to navigate all the inner workings of everybody's life and what they're doing, who they're hanging out with at home, who they're exposed to at home, you know, and then you got to go play. And then you got to go block this guy and tackle this guy. And hopefully he doesn't have something at this, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it, it was for the, for the challenge that they had, I think that they did, a, I think that they responded to it as well as they could. And they, and it obviously it was a healthy season for the most part. I mean, the season finished, they had some hiccups here and there, but I think, you know, it was handled as best as it could. Great. Uh, no, I think they did a pretty good job. You know, there's a couple of bumps with like the Titans and the Ravens there. It looked like for a little bit, but it seemed it seemed every week it was like panic mode. The media was just like, oh, oh does the season it. even continue? Or man, that was crazy. Uh, yeah. Ju- actually, on uh, on that NFL topic, um, obviously you played with uh, some big names. Like, what was that like? Obviously, jumping from from BC and then. Entering even a, a bigger, um, you know, bigger stage, obviously with the quarterbacks, the running backs that you played alongside. Like, what, what, what is that like? And you cracking in there, making some big plays. Like, hey, we want to highlight those. We're gonna put them in the in the highlight video. That's for sure. Uh, I mean, it was awesome because I mean, I, I grew up a New York Giants fan, so okay. it was kind of a different uh, thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, it's like. It's different from if you were like a kid from Ohio, if you get picked up by the Giants, it's like, oh yeah, it's my lifelong dream, obviously. But for me, being, you know, from New Jersey, being from and have your whole, pretty much your whole family, Giants fans, it was like, wow. You know what I'm saying? And so like going into locker room and playing with the guys, you know, you some of the guys you grew up watching, some of the guys you played against in college or played with, uh, it was awesome, you know, because it's, it's, you know, you're kind of playing with the best of the best and that's kind of your, you know, your dream to kind of see how you stack up against some of the best of the best. And um, yeah, every day, you know, every day I'm pretty much playing in my dream job. Like you wake up and you're like, I, my, my dream, you know, is here. Um, and I, my, my job is to be the best football player I can be. So that's like in itself is like, wow, this is what I get to do. So every day it was kind of just like a, another lesson of gratitude. If that, you know, is, is, it's dope. So, yeah. Man, I wish I was Tall enough and good enough. Yeah, play, like, yeah. Just, sport, just I, baseball bro. I, I told myself ball. football was too competitive. <laughs> I wasn't getting in that lane. I had no business over there. Uh, so uh, you know, you've obviously like we just mentioned, you're on the we're on the Giants. I'm sure you have like connections around the league and contact with some guys. Still, Are you hearing anything? Like anyone that hasn't made made a move yet? Like maybe they're free agents. Like can you give us a little inside information? Inside information. You guys are breaking the news, man. <laughs> Honestly, right now, um, I, I don't because I mean, obviously, I pay attention to like the, the ticker and stuff, but I don't personally, I think I feel like guys are really like they keep the, the cars really close to them, you know what I'm saying? Like, rightfully so. Um, so I, I honestly wouldn't know at all until it comes out, and it's like, oh, and then you hit them up, like, yo, congrats! Like, but honestly, it's like, yo, I didn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know. Some guys that get picked up, I wouldn't even know that they were free agents. I was like, oh, snap. I didn't even know that guy was free agent. So it's like really, really secretive, like some Illuminati type thing. Yeah. <laughs> what What's that process like staying, uh, you know, staying ready and always just knowing, all right, I could get picked up tomorrow and just, you know, up and leaving and going to different cities. Like, I, I knew how it felt traveling, like, you know, from BC to a Clemson, but like, Imagine just picking up where you live somewhere else and always just being ready on the go. Like, what's that experience like? I mean, it's, I mean, it, yeah, it's just kind of like the life of a soldier, not, not trying to ever equate what they do to what we do, but just, you know, um, just kind of having that mentality of just like, at any given moment, you just have to be ready. My dad told me a long time ago, uh, it was a quote from Muhammad Ali, I mean, you know, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, and I think that's just something that's always been, you know, etched in my mind from when I was really young. So for me, it's not anything tough at all. Um, just kind of, I'm kind of been in that routine where you, in any way, where you just wake up. I wake up at a certain time naturally. I can't sleep in. I wake up at a certain time, go train, 
you know, recover, eat, whatever, go train again, and then and just constantly doing that regardless. So I mean, I'm kind of in that kind of in that rhythm anyway. So it's not it, for me, it's not really tough. But for if you know, if I was you know not, condi- my mind wasn't conditioned for that. I would say that would be very hard because it's like you know. You kind of get to a point at some time if you let doubt and negativity creep in. It's like, man, what are you doing this for? You know what I'm saying? Like, you kind of have that small moment. That's like, okay, if you're hearing anything, you're not hearing anything. Okay, people, they're interested, and then it's like, ah, oh, they're waiting, and it's like, it's like, you know, topsy turvy. So it's like, okay, you're doing all this training. Like, what are you really doing it for? You know what I'm saying? But for me, it's not really that tough because I've been conditioned that that way for so long. That's dope, man. That's dope. Have you heard anything with you regarding you recently or anything? I, heard, I, I can't disclose the teams, but I, I've heard, um, you know, it's, it's literally four teams right now that are very interested. Um, it's just trying to wait to see what the situation is after free agency, probably after the draft. If, if I'm, you know, if I can if I have my crystal ball, <laughs> probably after the draft, something with, you know, figure out and you know, being able to figure out and go, go to wherever city and just have to, you know, start over again. <laughs> Yeah, it must be tough, man. Yeah, man. Dude. Hey, listen, you done it. You done it at every place. BC, Ruggers, um, the Giants. So, you know, we got faith in you, bro. Yo, appreciate that, man. Big time, big time. What do you think about the moves made so far? Like, I know it's only been a few days, and they're all really coming out today or the last right. few days. But what do you think about some of the big moves done so far? Man, I, I can say off the top of my head, the Patriots are stockpiling, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to hear the idea of, of going three number three in the division ever again. I can see that. But um, but yes, yeah, the moves are being made. Uh that's kind of every year in, in um or every few years in, in free agency, you, you kind of get some head scratchers and then you kind of sit back and you just like see some things like wow, you know what I'm saying? Like it but for from the top of my head, for what I've seen, uh yeah, the the Patriots have done a phenomenal job, obviously, as far as like getting guys in, getting the right guys in for, for what they're trying to do in their program um, and their, you know, their their whole thing. But, yeah, free agency is just – it's always full of surprises, really. It's, cause I, I've been following for as long as I've been following for – well, for as long as I actually understood what was going on. Um, yeah, free agency has always had a box of surprises. Cool. So, uh, you know, you, you were on the Giants. Like, are they those guys that- – in college too, I guess. Anyone that's in the NFL, you keep in contact with them still? Anyone you're like oh, yeah, friends right. with and all that? I keep, I keep in contact with all my guys. I, I keep talking with all of them. I mean, I one of my best friends. I mean, I must give him a shout out. One of my best friends on the team, um, Darius Slayton. Um, we talk to him probably like once a week, and we're just like about just anything. And it's it's literally like all of my conversations are like so far from football. It's not even like thing and not you know him and guys you know on the team my running backs obviously you know Saquon and Wayne and you know my boy uh Elijah Penny obviously in the running back room that I was th- there with very close it's kind of I mean yeah the NFL like it's, it's very um you know you it's very quick and the turnover is quick as far as unless you have like an established you know contract and things like that but it's very quick you can you'll get up in one week and next week you're in, on the totally opposite side of you know America you know so but at the same time, one thing is that, you know, if you're ever in a locker room with guys, you know, that connection is there because it's like they know how hard it is to get here. And they know how hard it is to get to stay here. And it's really all about respect. And I, I, One of my coaches at Boston College talked about it, one of our special teams coaches, because he was in the NFL for about six years. And he was just talking about it. Yeah, the NFL is all about respect. You guys want to go to NFL, it's all about respect. You got to get the respect of the older guy. You got to get respect to your coaches, respect of the guys you're going against. You know what I'm saying? And. I think that's ultimately what it was. And I guess I guess those guys respect me because they still reach out. So <laughs> that's dope, man. That's dope. Um now moving moving along from, from football, obviously you're multifaceted, you know, do it all as as you said in the in the beginning offline. Um you produce some music. Um obviously tell us about that and you know I'm um, you know help out as, as much as I can, you know, trying to get your music played at all the clubs, you know, venues sure, sure. and stuff and let people know about you and, and, and something, sure. you know, but yeah, tell us about the music, how, how you got started with it. And, um, yeah. Where can we find you? Yeah. And where can we find it? Also, I did listen to some bars from you, John. I listened to some bars. You dropped some heat. <laughs> One of the songs I listened to. I was like, wow. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. I wasn't hit, bro. I, all, all the time before years where we were together, I never seen you. Do, no bars. 
And then all of a sudden, this dude hit me with some lines. I was like, whoa. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it, so honestly, I kind of, it's funny that you said that. Because I actually, I actually, so I started writing music at like 12. And I think the first time, because my uncles and their friends were like in the rap game at some point, like way back in like the early 90s, mm. late 80s. Um, and they were in the rap game and they kind of did some rapping from then on, kind of on the underground scene. And uh, they would always rap on my grandma's porch or in the front yard, backyard. They would always rap. And I'd be over there sometimes. And they would always be like, yeah, man, freestyle, freestyle, freestyle. My uncle was like, nah, man, you got to go to school. Nah, man, you're a football player, you ain't a rapper, and things like that. So then I came out, I actually freestyled and earned their respect mm -hmm. at the time. So I was like 13 when that happened. And then, so I was just like, yeah, you know, rapping, yeah, that's cool. But, I, you know, I, I, I ain't got time for that. I want to be a ball player. That was my whole thing. I want to I go to the NFL. That's my thing. And, you know, my dad was actually the one that said, well, no, my dad, my dad, my mom, was actually the one that said, well, I mean, you could, you can do music too, isn't it? No one said you couldn't do music and play football when you, when you get to the NFL. I mean, no one say, you know, that you can't do both. No one say you can't do both now. And I was like, yeah, but I mean, I don't even know where to start. Like, I don't know where the studios are at. I don't know, you know, plus I didn't, I don't want to, at that time I didn't want to be seen in that light really, you know, but yeah. whatever. So fast forward to when I got hurt my sophomore year. Mm. At, uh, Boston College, I had a lot of time. Um, I was from re when I was just I was because I wasn't really going to practice or meetings or anything. I was just rehabbing, and I would just go. I would rehab and I go to class, and so I had a lot of time after being done with like study hall and stuff like that. I had so much time, so I was just like, hmm. So I was, so I would always like we'd always freestyle like right before we go out. Well, we'd always freestyle in any somebody's room or. Uh, whatever the the lounge or outside, we always be freestyling. Like put a beat on and just freestyle for like a bunch of beats. Yeah, and, and, and so you know it was we had some we had some dope freestyling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some guys that I was like, oh, <laughs> y'all had it, y'all got it. You know what I'm and so we were freestyle, and it was my boy. Um, my roommate at the time, my sophomore year, my roommate, Marcus Aulo, yeah, yeah. told me, he was like, yo, man, yo, you should, you should low key, like, you know what I'm saying? You got a lot of time on your hands. Like, you should low key, like, see if you can, you know, do that. Just, just until you, you know, get back, obviously. Cause at the time, I can't, I won't lie. I mean, it was a rough, a very rough time. And he had seen me through a lot of that. And he helped me through a lot of that time. And he was just like, man, I just don't like you seeing you with a hood over your head in the dark watching, you know, on your phone or watching TV, like, you know, you should be doing something like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm like, yeah, but man, my, I, got, I got a cast from my foot to my knee. Like I'm, I'm not really trying to go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you know, my, my, another friend of mine, um, Mike Noel, who was a punter at the time, he was a DJ and he had the equipment and things like that and a microphone and stuff. And he was, he, and my, and so Marcus was kind of, we were at training table one time and Marcus was just like, yo man, John can, you know, rap, da, 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 like y'all should do something. And so Mike at the time was just like, eh, all right. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm really doing a DJ thing cause he, he was doing his thing. And I me, mean, I didn't really push for it. I was like, whatever, I'm not gonna beg. I'm not gonna, if you don't wanna do it, you don't do it. So then I started freestyling a little bit. We started freestyling a little bit one time at a weekend right before you we were going out sometime in the spring on um, in the winter coming back and he was like yo all right you know you got something yeah so we went so he said yo meet me at such and such man come down let's, let's, let's do something I'm like all right i got a beat for you he's like all right bet so i went and you know what i'm saying and he had played the beat i went to the bathroom yeah i went to the bathroom i i wrote up 16 bars while i but while i was in the bathroom came back it came back it wrapped it He's, I rapped it. He stopped it after I was done and I was kept, I was going still. He was like, I was like, yo, what's up? Cause I didn't, I never like was in the studio. I was like, what the, yo, why'd you, why is the mic off? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he was like, yo, this is good. And I was just like, <laughs> um, okay, thanks. Like, but why'd you stop? Like, you kind of messed my rhythm up. So he's like, all right, bro. Like, if we're going to do it, like, we should actually record it and really, like, all right, I thought that's what we were doing, but all right. So he recorded, boom actually rapping and I kept going after that. So he kind of thought that I was going to be done. I kept going after that. And 
I was rapping over, rapping over it. And I, I think I might have rapped maybe another 24 bars after that. And he finished it, boom. And none put it on SoundCloud. I was like, oh, snap. So people started listening to it. Like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? So during that time, um, they were hyping me up to like do more stuff. So then I got linked up with these people out in um, Hyde Park area. Yeah. These people that were rapping. And I asked, no lie, bro, during that time of, of you know, study hall, rehab, you know, getting myself really, really bad. I had yeah. six songs. Finished. The EP that you saw yeah. was actually supposed to happen five years ago. Wow. Shit. Yeah. That's not crazy. those, not those specific songs. Obviously, the subject matter was different at the time because a lot of things, a lot of things happened in six years, five mm-hmm. years. But that was was it was finished. Wow. Mixed, it was about to be mastered down, mixed and everything, mixed and mastered down. But at the time where it had got out, and I, I'm not gonna mention no names, but I was very much um, discouraged not to go forth with it. Wow. Uh, which for me, I didn't even know of the idea because the thing was what I was told was a bunch of things, but the thing in the beginning that I heard was you can lose your eligibility for, uh, marketing your music and getting any money from your music. Yeah. I, at the time, never really knew about that. I didn't know. I thought you could just put things on sound. I was listening to SoundCloud. I didn't really, I, I didn't really know about album music till like my junior year. I didn't really know that people were putting underground artists were putting money, putting things on those platforms to make money. I didn't know that. I knew the artists who were known was getting money off of their, you know, things like that because they were, they were known. But like, I didn't know that you can even do that. So most of my stuff was just going on SoundCloud and I wasn't receiving a dime from it. Yeah. And that was ultimately what I was going to do. You know what I'm saying? Just to do that. But um so long story short that was how it kind of stopped so i ended up not going through with it obviously you know folk put the focus on football and school and i mean i won't say that i regretted the decision because obviously it worked out to a certain degree but it was kind of like damn you know what i'm saying but so fast forward uh five years no actually i'm sorry four and a half years down the line i get back into it because now i'm i'm a pro yeah. You know, I own more of myself than I did in college. I have a little bit more time to do things, you know, outside of, um, you know, when we're on the field and things like that, obviously taking care of my responsibilities, but, you know, I have that time to do that. So, and plus there was guys on the, on the team who were, was doing that. So I felt like, all right, well, cool. That's the thing. Then, Hey, if they can manage it, I can manage it. We can do it. So, I met these guys in New York, met this kid, Eli, in New York, this young kid. At the time, he was uh, 18 years old. Yeah. Super talented. Super, like, unbelievable. Like, a kid who was, like, an old soul, wise among his years. Mm. Great, great dude. Great uh, skills as far as an engineer. He's an engineer, but he's also an artist. Got with him, kind of did some stuff, okay. And wasn't really done, just a bunch of unfinished tracks. Fast forward to another, maybe say another year or so, I meet this guy named, uh, we, well, his his name, his moniker is uh, C Major, my boy Charles. Yeah. He, he's pretty much the guy who's helping me with all this music stuff. He's like a guy who was in the music game, got tired of it, got tired of the business part, it's a messed up game, and he wanted to do stuff for himself. And I came in, so after we get done with our, our first session, I come in, I said, okay, man, how much do I owe you? Because that's kind of, you know, the thing, or you go, I go to the studio, different studios, you pay per hour or whatever. God said, yeah, free of charge. I said, what? Wow. We were in there for about eight hours. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, this is free of charge, bro. Like, I I feel like, he literally told me, like, I never, I didn't, wasn't really going to be into it. Like, because my friend at the time, my friend Kim was a, her brother, they are best friends. So he that's how we got introduced. So we went and she said, nah, Kim said you're a great dude, you're a real dude. And I at first I was skeptical because you're an athlete. So athletes kind of coming in the studio is kind of this thing of man, this guy is not good. He's gonna be wasting my time. He just wants to be a rapper. He's just a ball player that wants to be a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then after that time, it was like another Mike No moment, like, yo, this wait a minute, 
nah, you you can you actually can rap. Yeah, you're actually saying something. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, so I'm happy because you low key. He said you low key ca- kind of got me excited to do this again because for a yeah. while I wasn't doing this. I didn't want to do it. All the people that I was, you know, engineering for, they they weren't really good, and I was just wasting a lot of time. Yeah, and so if you, he said, if you like, bro. I mean, you can be here. I'm not going to charge you for nothing. I also make beats. This guy has like 5,000 beats. Wow. And I, I probably, I've listened to a hundred of them and I'd probably say like 95 of them are fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like one of those things like, yo, what? Why are you so quiet? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the catch? There was no, there's no catch. It hasn't been a catch since. And we're working on things obviously for the future to like, you know, grow everything. And somebody I really trust um and so we just did the whole thing at the studio and obviously you know working with other artists but yeah we kind of did that and that's kind of how it started man I was kind of it was during quarantine I just said yo I'm you said everything's locked down we might as well like tap yeah. back it's like kind of that situation okay you can't ball you might as well go tap into the other thing and that's kind of how it went and you know it, it it's been going pretty smooth ever since that's dope, man. Um, yeah, for the people, definitely, um, you know, check him out at Jonathan Hillman. Uh, you got a music name or is it just John? Yeah, it's, 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 it's Juan Don. That's the music. Juan Don, okay. Juan Don. I'm gonna say it's my guy, Juan Don. Juan Don. That's dope, that's dope. Damn, quarantine uh, seems to put up a lot of opportunities for a lot of people. I wouldn't start this with yeah, yeah, this whole podcast, podcast started because I'm sitting there in my house every day like, doing nothing. nothing. So, I, so I definitely, definitely get what you're doing. Where you come from, from and on. Yeah. You see, you see, I listen to a couple. You're really talented. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You're multi talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so, so, what was that injury, injury like? like? What was that? What happened? That happened that that really, really pushed you. Had that opportunity to really jump on the music part. So it was my sophomore year, and um, I. It was like that year was probably one of the more year, weird years athletically ever for me. Um, not only because it was like the first time I ever really been injured ever, like ever, even to this point, uh, thank God. But it was just like it was just weird, you know what I'm saying? Like me, so kind of coming in um, to my freshman year, having a phenomenal year, All American, All Conference, yeah, great, right? Going to the next year. Next first few games, not playing very well at all. Um, so the fourth game of the season, I actually didn't start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't start that game. So I was after a great week of practice I had, and because I knew that you know at this point, man, it's pretty much up to grads. I'm not I'm not playing very well. We're not playing very well as a team. And um, so I was just like, man. So I was sitting there and couple guys got, you know, nicked up. And so I had to go in. I actually went in um, early second quarter. I was on special teams most of the time for that game. But I was fine. I've I've always told myself, never, you can't be too big for anything. Um, Regardless, never be too high, too low. And people say, oh, man, you're all American. Why did you start? Well, hey, I'm not doing very well. I have to figure it out. So I'm not, I was very mature about that at a young age, not even just then. But um, so I'm playing the game. And we're, you know, doing what we're doing well. We're playing Northern Illinois. Tough, really tough Mac school. Probably the best team in the Mac at the time. Um, tough team. And we're playing them and, you know, we start running the ball, we're moving the ball and things like that. And I hurt, I hurt, I actually hurt my foot in the second quarter. I hurt, I hurt my foot. And it was my foot and my ankle that was hurt. I hurt my foot. It was fractured, the first, the fourth and fifth metatarsal, they call it. I'll never forget it. I can probably, I can spell that word now because of how many times I've heard it during that time. Um, so I, I fractured that in the second quarter. But, and I'm kind of not, it's not that when we are limping, but it's there. That adrenaline's kicking in, but it, it's there, you know? And, but how that how the beginning was like I was just like I, I, I can't you know what I'm saying like, I, I can't because yeah. nah. at the time I was I was just getting going you know what I'm saying in the game I was just catching my rhythm starting to break you know long runs and things like that 
So I was like, nah, I can't just go out like this. So I didn't really say anything to the trainers. It was one of the, one trainer actually knew he, he he saw that I was kind of a little off. I didn't say anything. I kind of you know football mentality. Like, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So I go in and and um, breaking runs now, starting to really get cooking, dominating the third quarter, going into the fourth, breaking long run, long touchdown run to kind of put us over. And you know we get a stop because our defense at the time was like number one, like all world at the time. And so we get a quick stop. We get the ball back. I break another long run. I hurdle somebody, come down, and throw somebody out the way. They land on my ankle. Oh, <sighs> so now the foot is, like, even more, like, and on the same side. So now the foot is even more, like, yeah, and the ankle is, like, that was the one that kind of, that was the last straw. So it's, like, I think maybe 11 minutes in the fourth quarter that happens. And I, I did that thing that, Pissed me off about that, man. I, we were we was dominating that game. We were like, and I was having a great game, but we were dominating that game, and we ended up edging it out. We ended up edging it out. Um, we ended up winning the game on a close margin, closer margin than it should have been. And afterwards, I go into the locker. I knew something was wrong. So for me, I'm thinking, okay, I I usually get those things on the side of my foot, those low top cleats. I have a wide foot, so those cleats are kind of narrow. So every now and then, you know, you're so you know, you you everything is so compact in that shoe that you know you're just gonna feel every cut every now and again. So I knew, I, yeah, I get those things. I mean, probably by Wednesday, I'll be I'll be fine. The ankle, I knew, okay, that's probably a high ankle sprain. That would be probably another week and a half, two weeks or whatever. I go in, get the X-ray and things like that. Um, so I was right about the high ankle sprain. I was yeah. right about that. <laughs> But the foot, I was wrong about that. Uh, I fractured, it was a fracture of the fourth and fifth metatarsum. So, and I was thinking, okay, well, four, okay, I'll just, we're three and one. Great start to the season. Um, All we need is three more to go to a bowl game. Obviously, we probably can sneak some more. We have great defense. I think we, we have confidence at the time. I'll just muscle it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's what I thought. My dad was in the room. My uncle was in there. My position coaches, the doctors, uh, head coach. So I'm just an offensive coordinator. So I'm just sitting there, and everybody's kind of, like, with a dismayed look on their face. I'm like, as if to say, like, it was, like, an ACL or a broken leg or a broken neck. I was thinking, well, it's just a foot. Like, I can, you know, four weeks, you know, I'll be all right. Everybody was kind of like, nah. <laughs> gotta do the surgery if you do the surgery you're out i'm like i don't well i don't want to do the surgery you know what i'm saying and say well you can get your year back uh this and that and i'm like i don't plan on being here that long anyway like (laughs) i want to i want to like you know what i'm saying i i want to play my dad my uncle was like nah and i never really seen my dad my dad's usually like a he's even more tapped in me in that regard, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've taken some shots as, or given some shots or taken some shots in my career. My dad's like, man, get up. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, so, like, for him to be kind of like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was kind of, like, weird. So, I was like, nah. They talked me into it. I was head down, obviously crying. I'm like, all right, man, whatever. Let's just do it. You know what I'm saying? And so I was out for the, I did the surgery. I was out for the rest of the year. Ended up getting my year back. Um, and during that time, you know, we lost every game after that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every game after that. And it was like one of those things where it's like, we might have, I mean, outside of Clemson, beating us by 17 on the road, which, I mean, we should be expecting when they went to the national championship that year. Um, every game was a one possession game. Yeah. Three points, one point, six points. So in my mind, I'm thinking, uh, now you're hurt. You're, you know what I'm saying? You're kind of like out of the loop, really. So in my mind, I'm thinking, damn, well, if I actually, we could have won that game, this game, this game, this yeah. game. This game. Cause at the time in my career, I was actually a touchdown the game. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, well, I'm the difference. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So, on top of that, you feel like that guilt, that whole thing, man, it's my fault, this and that, like, 
And everybody's like, no, it's not your fault. Stop thinking like, you know what I'm saying? Now you're not playing. It's it's and the team's kind of dropping down. Everything is just is just going bad. You know, the seniors that I had that, that were juniors that when I came in that I'd gotten close with, um, I feel I, you know, you just feel even more bad because now it's like this is their last chance. Yeah. And you know, um, it just didn't go out the way that it, it was supposed to go out for their senior season. Now, thankfully, a lot of those guys, you know, got opportunities and still are doing things in, on, on the next level, thankfully. But it always, during that time, it was rough because it's like, damn, you know, so I feel like you felt like you let a lot of people down. When you can't, when it's like, you can't really control that. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got hurt. So it's, it's not like you went out and did something stupid and got hurt off the field. You did, you did it in the line of battle. So, but, you know, my 19-year-old mind at the time just wasn't really thinking about that. And so, but but during that time, it opened up a lot of things. I, I kind of learned a lot about myself during that time. My faith got really strong, like extremely strong. Like I'm talking about like unbelievably strong during that time. I thought that I had a strong relationship with God before that. I was sadly mistaken. Um, obviously, I got into music back, you know, for real. And kind of learned different things about myself as far as like, you know, school, meeting different people yeah. at BC. Because, you know, Boston College, you're going to meet couple of different people you know yeah, what i'm saying like just, sure. as far as anything right yeah. and so i met a lot of different people a lot of different alumni and, you know kind of forged that connection to you know when i it kind of allowed me to really you know kind of gave me that well all right you know kind of taking uh rehab really serious because in the beginning i really wasn't i was like i don't, I don't get this this shit is stupid why am i doing this like you know what i'm saying i shouldn't even be here to point till Later on, where it's like, okay, I'm excited. I'm getting up like with a pep in my step, kind of like, all right, you know, I can now I can walk on the bot without a crutch. Now I can, I'm out the boot. Now I'm running. Now I'm cutting. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of levels of excitement. You know what I'm saying? To the point where you know I came, I, I was fully cleared. I, the first thing I did was I went to well, whatever. I don't know why. The first thing I did was I went to the Plex and played basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and I went up and I was I tried to test myself. So I was playing. I was playing pretty well. I told my boy I was running. I'm back. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those tests, those diagnostic tests, all that. You know what I'm saying? So it was exciting to the point where, and then the next year we went to Ireland, and in that game I break the longest run I've had in my career in that that's next so game, cool. and literally the the trainers had tears in their eyes, kind of like, "Yo, what? Wow!" You know what I'm saying? Now, unfortunately. We didn't win that effing game, yeah. but yeah. during that, during that, that just that part was kind of really special. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, kind of just was a testament of just like you just got to keep going. You know, you never, you never know what can happen on the other side. If I kind of decided to kind of keep that mentality that I had in the beginning of training and trying to get back, I probably wouldn't have been able to see that moment of just really being able to to come back and play at a high level again. I probably just would have been just another guy. You know what I'm saying? But so that, you know, that was, that was really special. And that year we ended up going and winning the bowl game. So that was really cool. And um, so, yeah, man, that, during that time, I learned a lot about myself. So, I mean, it was kind of a blessing in the sky. It wasn't yeah. all bad. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's, that's dope. I mean, um, obviously, you see really everything come full circle from training staff doing their job to you going and putting work. And, um, again, again, ultimately getting drafted and you know, having a good experience with workers. That's, that's super dope, bro. I remember, I remember around, around that time, time when, when you were playing in DC and all that, that was like, you were just, you were just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, we, <laughs> 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 we used to have conversations during that game, the actual conversation, because we played together at prep for so long. He was a middle linebacker at the time at a, at a UMass, and we just used to just like pound them. And because my boy Charlie, he was at prep. My boy Giacomo, who was at, uh, at prep as well, played at Boston College. So we would just be right. Oh well, man, they, every time, every chance they got the blockchain, they would just kind of like go extra. Right? <laughs> I try to lower my shoulder, really did. Just talk. He hated it, but it was it was fun. Yeah, those games were fun though. <laughs> we would go to the tailgate, drink, and just leave. We're going to the game. We're going to get lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Who else can we watch? Can we watch something else? <laughs> Man, um, that's, that's awesome. But yeah, so so where can we find you? Like, you know, you, you mentioned SoundCloud. You're on Spotify. Where, where can we find yeah, your music? Awesome. So my, my music got to me, Chuck, and my music team that we have. Um, we have it everywhere. So you can find it literally any. You just type my name, Juan Don. It's everywhere I mean, from t- Tidal to iHeartRadio to the Spotify, the Apple, everywhere. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, 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 everyone tuning, tuning in, in. Yeah, yeah, go check that out. out. Uh, so, yeah, 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 talk about that anywhere where we post all this. So, so. Uh, anything else you got for it, John? I mean, I, I just want to thank you. This is awesome. This is a huge step up. Like I said, I was like, you guys have sports journalism. I had an internship, so this is a huge step up from interviewing like high school soccer kids and athletes and stuff like that. So, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, man, appreciate you guys, man. I had, a, I had a blast. It was cool. John, appreciate you always, man. And like I said, like we'll, we'll definitely get up. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we got in stock. And uh, um, I'm sure the, the, the free agency stuff is going to come around. And, you know, it's all up, bro. You know, you know that. Definitely, definitely. For sure, man. Appreciate it. All right, John. I hit you, bro. All right, man. All right, later. Thank you. Ice on my neck, doesn't come in. I'm a pretty boy. I'm stunning.